Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be going over our sixth winter forecast. This is the second to last one we're going to be releasing here. Our final winter forecast will be out at the end of November. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very, very exciting Patreon page, where today we're going to be releasing the monthly winter forecast. We'll be breaking down December, January, January and February individually. So if you'd like to check that out, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. All right, for today's comment of the day, I want to know. There always seems to be a winter thaw in the wintertime, at least one month that is a bit warmer than what the rest of them have been. And I want to know which month do you think this winter is going to be the winter thaw? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video. And here we are taking a look at our precipitation forecast first off. And as you can see, we are expecting some drier than normal conditions there for the West. Uh, a lot of the southern United States and even extending up the eastern coast of the United States as well is going to be due to the lack of an, a nor'easter storm track. And really, when you see that lack of precipitation coming into California, that's a sign that there isn't really a southern jet stream. And that's what would bring the precipitation all the way across the southern United States and up the east coast. There is none of that this year, hardly. So in that case, we're going to be taking a look at some drier than normal conditions for this region. Let's get right into the moderately below average precipitation, though. And as you can see, for California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas especially there, we're expecting these regions to just be a little bit more dry than those tan regions. So we're a little bit more confident in the more below normal precipitation for this region. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards that very exciting above average precipitation regions. And then we're going to get into the temperature forecast, the snowfall forecast, and even our overall forecast. All right, now, as you can see, we have a light green region here, and this is for the Pacific Northwest and through the Rockies, the upper Midwest, the Great Plains, the Ohio Valley, and the Great Lakes. This is the area where we expect most of our storms to track through, and this is going to lead to above average precipitation throughout all of these regions. Uh, in that lighter shade, we're a little less confident. It should be spotty. Some regions might see that above average precipitation. In others, it might not be, but most, most of these regions here should be in the above average precipitation column, and that's what we're most confident in. Now let's start getting to our moderately above average precipitation regions. And as you can see for Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and even down in through Colorado as well, we are expecting some moderately above average precipitation. And these are just the regions where we're even more confident that there's going to be an active storm track heading right through. And I've said this since the very beginning of our winter thoughts and our winter forecasts. This winter looks to be a huge winter for the Cascade Mountains and also the Rocky Mountains. I think that's going to be a very active area with above average snowfall, uh, and it should be quite a snowy winter for you guys. All right, now our second above average precipitation region, our second moderately above average precipitation region, that is, for Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, and then Michigan, both peninsulas, matter of fact. And this is a region where, again, we're just expecting a little bit more of an active storm track. Those storms that head in through the Pacific Northwest are probably going to curve up into this region, while at the same time we get clippers from the north up there in Canada that head straight into this region as well. Those two separate storm tracks uh, kind of meeting in one location is why we have this moderately above average precipitation set up for this region. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to get started with our temperature forecast in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that above average temperature region. And as you can see, for the southern United States especially, uh, the two coasts, it's actually moved further north. So for California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, that's our first area of above average temperatures. And that moves straight through the south central United States and up into the southeastern United States, all the way up into the mid-Atlantic, actually. And this is our southeast ridge we've been talking about this for a long time now and it is becoming more and more dominant as we move towards the winter time this has been one of the latest developments as far as what we're looking at towards this winter obviously when you get started with the forecast very preliminarily which we do here on this channel uh, there is some features that you can underestimate or overestimate this has been one that we've underestimated and we've been increasing over time uh, until now where we're at now where we expect this southeast ridge to be a very very dominant feature here 
Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that moderately above average temperature region, the first one. And here we are for California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. This one has been here for basically the previous few winter forecasts, is at least, that we've made here. Uh, but as you can see here, as we move on, there's a second one now. And this is our southeast ridge uh, for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida. We're expecting moderately above average temperatures. Again, if you want more information on, uh, I guess, a little more in-depth as far as our month-to-month -month temperature forecast, you can do so by joining the Patreon. All you got to do is join for one month, uh, and that's going to be in the description or the pinned comment down below. I'll be posting that later today, and you can check that out. Uh, now, what we're going to do here is we are going to move on, and we're going to take a look at our below-average temperature regions in just a moment. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. This has changed quite a bit. Uh, as we're getting very close to our finalized winter forecast. Again, that's going to be released in about a month from now at the very, very end of November. So I guess a little bit less than a month. Uh, but yeah, in just about 20 to 30 days or so, somewhere in that time frame, we will be releasing that final winter forecast. So you're going to want to subscribe. You're going to want to stay tuned for that one. So what we're going to do, again, is we're going to move on and take a look at those below average temperatures. So here we are taking a look at those below average temperatures. And as you can see, this is going to head in through the Pacific Northwest into the Rockies, the Plains, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and portions of the Ohio Valley. Although this has been receded a bit further west from our previous update. And one of the biggest updates here that we have since our previous winter forecast is that now upstate New York in through northern, I guess the northern half or northern two-thirds of New England are now in the below average temperature column. Uh, I do expect that a lot of storms will move through this region. I do expect that there will be some uh, miniature troughs at times that do move through this region, and I think that's going to lead to overall some slightly, at least slightly, below average temperatures for that region. All right, now here is our moderately below average temperature region, and as you can see for Washington in through portions of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, in through the Dakotas, Nebraska, uh, in through Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, portions of Illinois, portions of Michigan, there are all going to be in the moderately below average temperatures. And this goes the same as the precipitation. Uh, we're just a little bit more confident there that we're going to be receiving some below average temperatures for that region. All right, now here is our far below average temperature region. And this is mostly due to the fact that we have a La Nina. This area is very, very typically uh, in that below average column during a La Nina. So our confidence is actually very high that we're going to be dealing with some below average temperatures for Montana, the Dakotas, and Minnesota, at least with some of the northern ends of some of those states to the south of there uh, being included as well. That's an area that's going to be very frigid at times during the course of this entire winter. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that snowfall forecast, uh, and then we're going to get right into the overall forecast. All right, now here we are taking a look at that snowfall anomaly forecast here for our winter time. And as you can see, we're expecting some below average snowfall for all of those regions that were drier and warmer than normal. That's our formula here. We use that to basically calculate where we will have less snowfall than normal. I know Miami does not get snowfall. I know Southern Texas does not get snowfall, but they do have below average precipitation and above average temperatures, which means they would have technically less chance of getting snowfall, even though it's almost zero as it is. Uh, now, for our above average snowfall, the lighter blue shade is, again, just for that confidence is a little lower, but we're pretty confident you will have some above average snowfall or at least average to slightly above average. Those two darker blue regions is where we're, we have that moderately above average snowfall. So for that storm track heading in through the up, uh, sorry, the Pacific Northwest in through the Rockies, and again, the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes there as well. Those are those two regions where we had the moderately above average precipitation. They both have below average temperatures. That equals an easy forecast for above average snowfall. All right, now let's go ahead and just immediately move on to our overall forecast. All right, now for First things first, we're going to get started with the Pacific Northwest. Very cold and stormy for that region. Again, we're even expecting it to be more stormy than originally anticipated for that green region. Mountain snow, we're expecting far above average snowfall for that white region. And to the southwest of you, flip-flop, that's a new development there. Uh, I do expect that you could have some cool downs there along the west coast at times. We were expecting it to be actually very warm throughout that region. I've kind of come back on that a little bit where I'm expecting it to be 
uh, flip floppy. It could get cold at times, could be warm at times, which is a bit colder than the forecast was for your region uh, just a couple updates ago. Now, we have warmer expected for portions of New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and in through Mississippi as well. That has kind of been the case for a few forecasts now. Cold and snowy just to the east of the Rockies. Uh, you guys expect to get a lot of snowfall throughout the winter, and you're expecting to get some above-average snowfall this winter as well. And then for that purple region, Arctic invasions, I think we could have those very potent cooldowns. Uh, for that polar vortex region, extend down into this Arctic invasion regions. Not every time, but sometimes, and that's the difference between the purple region and that pink region to the north. Speaking of that pink region to the north, let's get right into it. Polar vortex uh, in a La Nina like this, uh, that air mass, that Arctic air mass called our polar vortex, does have a higher tendency to come down into the United States. It doesn't happen every winter, uh, but this winter is more than likely one of those winters where that could make its appearance known. Uh, and then for the Great Lakes, we expect active lakes this year. We've seen that already. We've seen some lake effect snowfall uh, already occurring. Uh, and we're seeing uh, more and more probabilities that we could see more of that moving forward. Worst of winter for that light blue region, that really hasn't changed. Uh, I expect Missouri up through into Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, and portions of Wisconsin and Iowa to be our worst of winter, which is our most snowfall is we're really expecting the most of the snowfall to be in that region this winter and some of the worst snowstorms uh, compared to normal that is because obviously uh, the mountaintops out in the Rockies get a little bit more snow than Illinois uh, but this is comparatively to normal going to be the worst of winter more snow for that red region and what that means is more snow than the previous few winters possibly even average to above average snowfall although I do expect some of those regions to be below average snowfall but Still a lot better than some of those previous two or three winters we've had uh, just recently. Now, for the winter battle zone, which is that pink region, that's where we expect some sloppy storms, some rain, some snow, some mixed, mostly rain, but we will see some of those sloppy ice and snowstorms at times. And then last but not least, we have a southeast ridge over the southeastern United States, which again is going to be one of the more dominant features this winter, which really should hinder some of those snow chances for that region in the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. Unfortunately, that's exactly what we dealt with the previous two winters, uh, so there is some similarities moving forward. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys in yesterday's video, which was also about the winter, so if you want to check that out, you can. I asked you guys, what do you think the worst snowstorm is going to be this winter? When do you think it'll be? This is kind of a random question, and I know nobody's going to get this even remotely correct, but Kyle Graybill said, I think there will be a nor'easter in February. Oddly specific, probably likely that it, that could happen, uh, just because, you know, we probably will have one of those storms each month. Uh, or give or take, so we'll have to see if that's accurate or not. I think that's a really cool call there. Anyway, for our patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Michael Michael Caudalesa, Madbirds, Alicia Davis, Catbite, Terry Curtis, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Felix Wheatfield, Kellen Manhart, Michael Buell, Mariah Vieira, Noah Harley, and Mark J. Alongside our Platinum patrons, Adam S., Gary Fifolt, Justin Quantrell, Donna Carnes, Alan Balemo, Larry LaPan, Dovey Nagel, James Wade, and Cameron Marshall. If you would like to end up on this patron end screen, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.